Although we know very little about the mechanisms that organise tissues in three dimensions and control cell proliferation in real tissues, it's clear that many complex controls operate and that cancer cells must undergo many changes to escape all of them. This idea that cancer cells differ in several ways from normal cells was crystallised as the hallmarks of cancer by Hannah Hannan Weinberg in 2011. These hallmarks include evading growth suppressors, enabling replicative immortality, activating invasion and metastasis, inducing angiogenesis, resisting cell death, sustaining proliferative signalling, and there are also several emerging cancer hallmarks which have been suggested. These include tumours promoting inflammation, genomic instability and mutation, deregulating cellular energetics, and avoiding immune destruction. We will discuss each of these cancer hallmarks in turn, though invasion and metastasis and genomic instability will be discussed in a subsequent video. Sustaining proliferative signaling. Cancer cells are able to sustain chronic proliferation. Normal tissues carefully control the production and release of growth promoting signals that instruct entry into and progression through the cell growth and division cycle thereby ensuring a homeostasis of cell number and thus maintenance of normal tissue architecture and function. Cancer cells are able to acquire capability to sustain proliferative signaling. This includes through production of growth factor ligands, sending signals to stimulate normal cells to supply cancer cells with growth factors, and elevating receptor levels, making cells hyper-responsive to growth factor ligands. Cancer cells can also constitutively activate downstream components of growth receptors, meaning that they no longer need ligand-mediated receptor activation. Many known cancer mutations relate to proliferation, proliferation such as mutations in the retinoblastoma 1 pathway that controls entry into the cell cycle, or mutations in RAS, which controls several cellular processes, including cell growth, proliferation, and differentiation. Several pathways can have mutations leading to unregulated proliferation. This includes the Wnt signaling pathway, the KRAS, BRAF, and MAP kinase pathway, and the PI3 kinase AKT pathway. These are all signaling pathways relating to cell proliferation. The Wnt signalling pathway is mutated in almost all colorectal cancers, either in APC, beta-catenin, or a more recently discovered transcription factor, TCF. APC inactivation is the most frequent. Beta-catenin acts with TCF transcription factors in the nucleus and regulates cell proliferation and clonal expansion. These are thought to be tumour suppressor genes as they regulate differentiation and stem cells and would normally function to prevent cells from dividing or growing too fast or in, a, or in an uncontrolled way. Therefore, inactivation of things like APC are seen in cancer. Another example is the EGF receptor. Downstream of this includes RAS and RAF, and activation of the receptor will promote cell proliferation and survival. EGFR also activates PI3 kinase and AKT, and P10 antagonizes this. Almost all of the components in these pathways can be mutated in cancers, and most are activated, so are oncogenes. P10 is an exception, which is a tumor suppressor gene, which may be deleted in cancer. It can be easier to understand mutations by considering the pathways they affect rather than the individual gene, for example, it appears that mutating RAS has much the same effect as mutating RAF, so both mutations can be regarded as activating the RAS-RAF pathway. In addition to being able to induce and sustain positively acting growth stimulatory signals, cancer cells need to not respond to the negative feedback mechanisms which usually regulate cell proliferation. Many of these programs are dependent on tumour suppressor genes, which are genes that normally function to limit cell growth and proliferation. Two examples include retinoblastoma protein and P53, which both regulate proliferation and can activate senescence and apoptotic programs. 
The retinoblastoma protein determines whether cells should proceed through the growth and division cycle, and it responds to many diverse extracellular and intracellular signals. A defect in this pathway means that cancer cells can persistently proliferate. P53 receives signals that indicate cell stress and genomic damage. It receives a variety of stress signals, including signals announcing DNA damage, inappropriate oncogene activation, and telomere shortening, and can signal for the cell to arrest at the cell cycle or go into apoptosis. Various adverse signals can, in, can produce a stress response, which typically results in cycle arrest and a characteristic series of biochemical changes. Several viruses, including high-risk human papillomavirus, which is associated with cervical cancer, have proteins that overcome senescence by binding and inactivating RB1 and P53. Apoptosis is an important mechanism for limiting proliferation and for removing damaged cells. Several anti-apoptotic mutations are seen in cancer, including those of Bax and P53. Bax is a major mediator of apoptosis, upregulated by P53. Bax protein antagonizes its relative, BCL2, and mediates permeabilization of the mitochondrial membrane and activation of caspases. These are proteolytic enzymes which degrade cellular components, leading to programmed cell death. Mutations in Bax and P53 are thought to be seen in colon cancer. Bax, a pro-apoptotic regulator, may be downregulated in cancer to evade apoptosis. BCL2 is an anti-apoptotic regulator, and tumour cells can also upregulate this to avoid cell death. Normal human somatic cells in culture only divide a fixed number of times before entering cycle arrest, a response known as senescence. Tumour cells can escape this limit to grow indefinitely. This limited division potential is controlled by telomere length. Telomeres are the repeat structures at the ends of chromosomes, and in most somatic cells, they are shortened at each division. They are restored in the germline by the polymerase called telomerase. Most human cancer cells have turned on telomerase. The mechanism of this turning on is generally unknown, but a recent discovery is that point mutations in the promoter of telomerase activate expression, and this has been reported so far in 70% of melanomas and 10 to 20% of randomly selected cancers. Other cases have been reported where a strong promoter is joined to the telomerase gene by a chromosome rearrangement. In order for a tumour to grow beyond a certain size, it needs to develop a blood supply by sprouting of new branches from the neighbouring capillary network. This process is known as angiogenesis. It has been postulated that tumour growth might be limited by the need for angiogenesis and that a tumour has to produce angiogenic factors. It is not known whether tumours produce angiogenic factors as a result of specific mutations, or whether these factors are a normal homeostatic mechanism responding to cues, to, to cues such as anoxia in the tumour tissue. Normal processes such as wound healing and infarction induce angiogenesis. VEGF, known as vascular endothelial growth factor, is an inducer of angiogenesis, and it may be upregulated by cancer cells. Blood vessels produced within tumours by chronically activated angiogenesis are often aberrant with convoluted, excessive branching, erratic blood flow, leakiness, and abnormal levels of endothelial cell proliferation and apoptosis. In some tumours, it has been shown that oncogenes such as RAS and MYC can also upregulate angiogenic factors. Tumours are densely infiltrated by both innate and adaptive arms of the immune system, thereby mirroring inflammatory conditions arising in non-neoplastic tissues. Previously, this was thought to be an attempt by the immune system to eradicate tumours. It is also known that many tumour types evade immune destruction. However, it has recently been suggested that tumour-associated inflammatory responses help enhance tumorigenesis and progression. 
Inflammation can supply molecules to the tumor microenvironment, such as growth factors, which sustain proliferative signaling, survival factors, which limit cell death, and extracellular matrix modifying enzymes, which facilitate angiogenesis, invasion, and metastasis. Inflammatory cells can also release chemicals, for example, reactive oxygen species, which are mutagenic to nearby cancer cells and accelerate genetic evolution towards malignancy. Therefore, inflammation is considered an enabling characteristic for tumours. Warburg postulated that cancer cells reprogram their glucose metabolism to be predominantly glycolysis, even in the presence of oxygen, a state known as aerobic glycolysis. They increase uptake and utilisation of glucose by increased GLUT1 transporters. Hypoxia and RAS oncoproteins can further upregulate glycolysis by increasing the levels of hypoxia-induced transcription factors, known as HIF. HIF. Though glycolysis has poor efficiency at generating ATP compared to mitochondrial oxidative phosphorylation, it is thought that increased glycolysis allows diversion of glycolytic intermediates into biosynthetic pathways, including those for making amino acids and nucleotides, which will be needed to make macromolecules and organelles in new cells. There is also another mechanism that has been seen in tumour cells, where there are two populations of cells, which function symbiotically. One subpopulation, the hypoxic cells, depend on glucose for fuel and secrete lactate. The lactate is then transported and used as fuel by the other subpopulation of cancer cells, which are better oxygenated. This is still being actively researched and is classified as an emerging hallmark. Another emerging hallmark is the role of the immune system in preventing tumour development. There is emerging evidence that the immune system acts as a barrier to tumour formation and progression in both virus-induced and non-virus-induced cancers. It has been shown in mice that tumours arose more frequently in immunodeficient mice than immunocompetent mice. Also, transplantation experiments have shown that cancer cells which originally arose in immunodeficient mice are often inefficient at initiating secondary tumours in immunocompetent mice, whereas cancer cells from tumours in immunocompetent mice are equally efficient at initiating transplanted tumours in both types of host. It has been interpreted that highly immunogenic cancer clones are routinely eliminated in immunocompetent hosts and that weakly immunogenic cancer cells can colonise both immunodeficient and immunocompetent hosts. Highly immunogenic cancer cells may evade immune destruction by disabling components of the immune system, which would normally recognise them. For example, can cancer cells can paralyse NK cells and infiltrating cytotoxic T lymphocytes, for example, by secreting TGF-beta or other immunosuppressive factors. This field is still being actively researched. However, at present, immunoevasion is classified as an emerging hallmark of cancer.